Hello everyone, this video is about our inner seed and what it really means to save seed. So other terms that are used for this teaching are no fap, seed retention, harnessing sexual energy or the kundalini, uh, raising the sacred secretion and even chastity. Um, so we're going to have a specific look at how the seed affects the body and why this ancient knowledge has been passed down uh, by secret groups throughout the centuries. So basically the saints and sages knew that by saving seed during certain time phases, it would not only benefit their health along all lines, but it would also help them to bring their dreams and desires into fruition or manifestation. And of course, there are still many wise, powerful, um, super healthy and wealthy people in the world today who already know and take advantage of this knowledge. In fact, I would even go so far as to say that the majority of the super wealthy know and utilize this knowledge. Um, so, sexual energy and the generative or procreative seed. Divine essence, animating power, God, chi, sexual energy, electromagnetic energy or kundalini uh, shakti in and through our bodies is the same for every single one of us no matter what path we follow, we all have divine power animating our being. And the only difference is the name that we use for this mysterious, magical life force. And as Shakespeare wrote for the beautiful Juliet Capulet, whose initials happen to be JC, what's in a name if we call a rose by any other word it would still smell as sweet meaning a name is nothing more than a name a convention and reminding us that it's important not to get hung up on names titles or labels and in doing so demonize concepts that we're just unfamiliar with so regardless of what we call it, the current of consciousness rises through the body to the head and reflects down through the energy centers along the spine. When it reaches the root chakra or the coccygeal plexus, it turns and flows back up the spine to the crown of the head and back and so on and so forth. This cycle is perpetual, never ending. At the same time as part of the current pumps through the head, another portion of it will be making its way through the lower centers. So it's continually circulating and it forms a beautiful circuit, which is biblically known as Galilee. It's a self-charging battery of life, this circuit, it continually refreshes and recycles itself and gives rise to our mental visions of the world. All life forms operate via the same principle. The wondrous currents and circuits of consciousness or divine energy pulsing throughout creation Every tiny cell and seed is a self-charging battery with its electric core and its magnetic casing. Now, let's look more closely at the cell or seed itself. All life begins with a seed. We all know that trees 
come from seeds. Therefore, the tree's fruit also comes from the seed. And we operate in the same way. We also come from a seed. Just as plants develop beautiful fruits and blossoms from their seeds, we also achieve good health and are fruitful by saving our seeds. In other words, the process of fruit growing on a tree and a human's life blossoming with success are completely synonymous. Human fruition from the nurturing of our inner seeds becomes apparent in all aspects of our lives, from health and wealth to radiant youth and rejuvenation and boundless energy and healing. And not to mention the work that we produce and the art that we produce and the relationships that we produce. As the Bible tells us in Matthew 7, 16, by their fruits ye shall know them. So if something looks awry on the outside, it's because something is not quite aligned on the inside, or there's something that needs processing, some trauma that needs to be released, or just something that isn't quite in harmony within. This all coincides with the seed that is mentioned in the sacred secretion or superconsciousness awakening practice. Um, and of course, George Carey mentioned it in God, Man, the Word Made Flesh as well, when he famously said that every 29 and a half days, a seed is born in or out of the solar plexus. And that seed is a psychophysical seed because it's etheric and manifest. It's the crossover point, the mitosis of life coming into our bodies. Now, we all have wonderful dreams and desires, hopefully. And if we haven't, we should work on remembering what our dreams and desires really are. And these dreams and desires are according to two major factors. One is nature. So that is our individual DNA program and that is aligned to our destiny. And the second factor is nurture. So the influences that we're exposed to, uh, the programming and conditioning um, and influences that we are subject to from birth. And so what we aspire to do, to be or to achieve are inevitably influenced by both the inner nature and outer nurture factors. And if you've been on a spiritual journey for a while, you are probably fully aware already that thoughts are things. I know this a hundred percent to be true there are times when i've literally felt that i have glitched onto a whole new strand of reality and i have a knowingness that there's still another strand of reality happening that was going in a completely different direction simply by making a different choice in a moment um so yes, this is very important that we really grasp this concept that thoughts are things and that reality isn't linear. There's an infinite amount of pe um, potential available to the, our lives unfolding at all times. In fact, manifestation is a completely natural principle, meaning nature can't deviate from the path of causing our thoughts, visions, imaginings, um, coupled with our feelings, the, with the feelings that we hold about things from manifesting in our lives, circumstances and experiencing uh, and experiences. 
The procreative seed or generative seed assists with manifestation because it holds the pure light of creation within it, i.e. it has the power to create new life. These seeds actually contain the animating life force, the intelligence of God. Um, but a lot of our dreams can appear to go by the wayside. I've experienced this for myself and I know others that feel frustrated or disheartened because they can't quite seem to get an alignment with manifesting things and being open to things happening for their best good. And I think this is down to a widespread misconception that most people equate their brain as their mind. Um, and they equate their brain as holding the ultimate creative power. But all that squidgy white and gray matter with its billions of neurons is not mind. It's actually just a processing center that mind acts on and works through. So then where is mind? Where is the light of creation within us? Well, we all start life as a seed, specifically as humans, a zygote seed. And that is the subtlest form that we ever exist in. Now, our minds exist in the zygote, even before the zygote has a brain per se, and unbeknownst to us, we are already thinking out creation as designed by the DNA within our initial seed self. We then undergo fetal development in the amniotic fluid of the mother's womb, which is alkaline, meaning electron rich, and is full of mineral cell salts, and are born around 40 weeks later. So with all this in mind, it's easy to recognize that the initial seed of us, the zygote, contains the light of creation, the mind and or DNA that programs the entire generation and development of the body, not only through pregnancy, but all the way through our lives. Um, the initial seed of us has intelligence and it mysteriously knows how to duplicate into other types of cells and build the entire body. So all of that intelligence, all of that God, that consciousness current is in every teeny tiny seed, including the zygotes from which we blossom. And in Jeremiah 1.5, it says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the moon, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So each consequent cell after the zygote also held, holds DNA akin to the initial seed DNA. And the initial seed DNA is the program, the antenna, with which all the consequent cells communicate. And so every, every single cell of our being contains the pure light of creation, mind or intelligence. And all of those cells are responding back to that one cell. And in his wonderful book, which I highly recommend called Aham Self, and Neil Sharma tells us that our own conscious and subconscious thoughts control the life force within the initial seed. So you could say that my I am identity 
or the divine I am even, is in the initial zygote that formed the whole of Kelly. And according to the wisdom of sages, our initial zygote self still resides in our body as the pineal gland. And thanks to visions that I've had during this specific time phase of my super consciousness awakening practice, I can attest to this being the truth, that our pineal and our spine is synonymous to that original seed of our identity. So the esoteric symbol of the growing, opening and seed spreading pine cone seen on hundreds of ancient buildings and manuscripts refers to the initial seed of our being, the zygote, and how it develops, blossoms and sows or scatters and duplicates more and more seeds in our bodies throughout our entire lives. So when you say I, or when I say I, we are really referring to this initial seed or self and the life force that brought us into the visible manifest realm. So I hope this has made it clear how mind truly resides within the initial seed and of course every consequent seed cell. Yes, there is literally pure intel and creative light throughout our entire being and beyond, of course. Again, the developed zygote is the pineal and the pineal or conarium is the sun of the body. It is the seed dispersal unit, the same as the sun in the sky. And it literally tells our bodies when it's day and when it's night by its secretions. It's so magical. And when we experience dreams through the pineal, it's because we're in a relaxed and meditative bliss and DMT can secrete into the third ventricle and it can give rise to all of our deepest desires and longings and sometimes our dreams and visions are heavily coded but inevitably we receive epiphanies from source or from God because that is the original point of connection with God. That is where that original intel of the, our individual self, where it resides. Therefore, it's the pure light of creation acting on the pineal, the mature zygote, that ultimately seeds and develops the fruit, the fruitions of our lives. In trees, nothing but seeds can produce fruit. And in us, Nothing but seeds can produce fruit. Our seeds inherently work towards manifesting the fruits of our dreams. In the context of a tree, the seed first generates the stem. And from that central hub, numerous fruits emerge from various seeds on branches. Likewise, our initial seed produces the central nervous system with its stem or cord encased by the 33 spinal vertebrae. And in that central hub, more seeds are produced and diversified into their various forms or blossoms every month, coinciding with the lunar cycle because the nervous system floats like a serpent in the lymphatic waters which are heavily influenced by the moon and the lymphatic waters include CSF and marrow in the body. So these two systems, our central nervous system, the spirit fire system and our lymphatic soul water system are basically the manifestation of cosmic sexual energies in the body. 
together they produce all the new cells or seeds of the body, both procreative and otherwise. And I have another quote for you. The circle with a dot in the center is the pattern on which everything is built. A cell has a center called the nucleus, surrounded by protoplasm. Fruit has a core or a stone in the center around which there is pulp, the juicy edible flesh. Now, when our vibration is high in bliss and gratitude, when the sympathetic mode is switched on in meditation and our temple bodies are clean and pure from healthy choices, every single cell of the body generates cosmic waves which rise via the spinal cord and pour as illuminating essences into the brain. By recognizing the importance of saving and nurturing our seeds, we inevitably propel the realization of our dreams and aspirations. This really is why our monthly cycle or superconsciousness awakening time phase coinciding with the moon is paramount to our health, mentally, emotionally, physically, and even financially and materially, because it's all a reflection. Healing and success are totally synonymous. Healing and success are one. When you really heal from past traumas and resolve inner conflicts, your cells inevitably harmonize. Your vibration rises effortlessly and you become a magnet for all your dreams and desires. So please gift yourself with the time that you deserve. You really do deserve it to heal and nourish yourself, your cells. There's nothing better that you can do for yourself than surrender to God's healing. The sacred secretion flushes trauma, addictions, and other dilapidating habits and tendencies from our bodies on all layers. I can't tell you how much lighter I felt after my first true healing. Honestly, it was like a blindfold was taken from my eyes and a coat of like lead or something was just <sighs> lifted off my body. God is so good. There just aren't words to describe the magic that's available to us. So our procreative organs are storehouses of all the finest bodily essences. Our male and female procreative seeds and fluids are bursting with actual intelligent life force. Yes, the divine mineral salts and the, the crystal clear protoplasmic waters of the body, the Christ oil, have the potential to make entire human beings. This is the stuff that you came from. Your whole life, everything that you know, was born in these essences. So if we don't waste these majestic seeds and fluids, the life force and materials can be reabsorbed into the body and utilized to perform whatever task the body's systems are prioritizing for our optimum health, healing, and restoration at that time. The body knows it is always working for your highest good. So by having more of those magical elements and essences available to it, it can go to town on healing you and recovering you and releasing cortisol. When you cry, when you go into healing and it makes you want to cry, you release cortisol, you release stress 
and imprints of old traumas actually from your cells. This is such a deep work. This is such an incredible work. I just I can't tell you enough. When the seeds and fluids are in surplus and are broken down and reabsorbed into body, they start the ascension toward the cross in the medulla oblongata. True bliss and unconditional love actually causes these essences to charge, to vibrate with so much energy and to multiply resulting in the awakening of dormant brain cells and even the production of new brain cells. DNA codons, junk DNA as they tell us, just being plugged in and us having access to our highest self. It's incredible. But with a lack of life force, we feel sluggish and unenthusiastic, our thoughts become foggy, Our we get headaches, um, and all the body can think to prioritize is rest. We unwittingly put our nervous system on the back foot where it needs to regather energy in order to function more fully. Um, of course, this lethargy leads to stimulant cravings such as food, caffeine, or nicotine, or something stronger perhaps. So we find ourselves or ourselves in a kind of like suspended reality where we feel kind of frustrated and like we're in a lull or we're trapped and there's there's something us holding us back and it, it, sometimes it can feel like an outward force or entity is just pressing on us. And it's basically because we are in desperate need of healing. Um, and that's because all of the organs in the body rely on the life force and vital essences. Um, so to summarize what has been said, don't waste or squander your vital essences, especially when the moon is in your sun sign, which is your personal regeneration time phase. Make good health choices, just the best that you can personally make for you. Every bit of progress counts. Eat fresh alkaline foods and drinks like organic fruits and lemon water whenever you can. Keep your mind's wanderings pure and high vibe because even a single thought can cause a sexual response and an urge to release. Likewise, a single thought of anger or envy can cause the adrenals to waste vital essences as well. High frequency thoughts and emotions of praise gratitude, love and peace cause the essences to charge and move upward in the body. And the last point that I want to reiterate is that you should please take the time that you deserve, I mean it, you really deserve to rest and heal, to process trauma and move into a new place of bliss and vibrancy, which will cause you to become so energized and powerful that you can't help but manifest the life of your dreams. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, wow, like it's such a pleasure to journey with you. For those who are new to this and who have yet to experience this powerful movement in their bodies, welcome and what an inspiration. Thank you. Um, you are so important. You are so important. You deserve so much love and 
light in your world and just please don't let anybody ever tell you otherwise. Don't let the dream stealer of time, the dream stealer of the adverse voice in your brain, don't don't let any of those factors bring you down. Like worrying isn't the truth. Realizing your power, realizing your potential, moving into your highest self and attracting all the great wonderful things, the wonderful relationships and joy and creating new lovely memories, that is what you deserve and nothing else, nothing but good. So I pray that each and every one of you will just be touched with a drop of divine magic right now and that you will all manifest divine love always and in all ways. Thank you so much for watching. It is an honor to journey with you, as I said, and of course, the links to my course on Teachable, which is called Super Consciousness Awakening, is in the description box below, and also the links to my social media accounts and um, my website and of course my books as well. The Cell of Life in particular is specifically about the journey of the seed through the body um, linked to lots of Christian nativity and Easter story references and the God Design explains both the chemicals that the body produces at this time and also explains the more etheric side and the timing of the sacred secretion and elevation is a metaphysical and alchemical breakdown of the bible book of revelation so what john's vision was really about and it's not what you think so if you haven't seen those older videos, give them a watch or buy the book. And yeah, namaste everyone.